Hello and welcome to the world of NDE 4.0. My name is Johannes Vrana and today is a great day. Because today we're getting to a really important topic for Industry 4.0 and NDE 4.0 from a business point of view. We will be getting into how do we actually generate value from all of that data. And as we from NDE and NDT industry, we are the ones which, are, which generate terabytes of data. I think that's one of the videos all of us should be watching. Now let's get started with the value generation engine for Industry 4.0 and NDE 4.0, the cyber physical loop. Talking about the cyber physical loop, we have to get into the topic of feedback loops, which is a topic people have been using for several decades by now. Now what people are doing in feedback loops, they are normally taking some sort of data, they are putting it into some data processing, they are using some processing power, they are putting it into some visualization, like some Excel or R or whatever tools they want to use, and finally, they take that knowledge they are creating out of analyzing that data to create some action. Now that's the typical scope of a PhD thesis or a master thesis, and it creates a lot of knowledge and a lot of value already to a lot of industries. Now, this setup of this feedback loop, that's clearly proprietary. And what people do after it is finished for the first time, then you think about, okay, how can we create even more knowledge out of it? So they add an additional data source, let's say some financial data. They add perhaps some additional computing power, some additional algorithms. They add perhaps even more data sources, perhaps some augmented reality to have some really fancy and value adding visualization. They add perhaps even more data sources, perhaps even an AI. And finally, we are getting here. What has happened? It has started as a small solution. It has grown, grown, grown bigger. And it's a proprietary solution, which was never intended to be used for what it is used at the end. So what we really need, we need a more scalable approach for a feedback loop. And that's kind of the cyber physical loop. It's more a framework approach to this whole topic. Now, we already discussed one of the core elements of a cyber physical loop, and that's the industrial internet of things. And I will put the video to the playlist of the videos I did on the IOT right here. Now the core, in the core, the industrial internet of things, what it does, it allows every single device we have in our industrial production, in our industrial planning, in the lifetime of our asset, so that every single asset can talk with every other single asset, and that they can learn from each other, that a production facility, a smart factory, can self-balance its production path. That we can learn how to improve the production. That we can learn how to improve the maintenance. That we can learn how to improve the design. So this is really, that is replacing all of those single pathways from the data processing or from the data collection to the data processing. Now what we need is actually, we don't need, this is still kind of five separate data sources just combined and that and enabling that every device can talk to every other device. What we need in addition, we have to fuse the data. We have to combine the data streams so that we can really learn something from them. So what we need for that is we need to give the data structure. 
We have to make the data machine readable. We have to convert the data to information. And that is done by the so-called semantic interoperability or by ontologies. And I've done a video about that in the past and we'll leave the link to that video right here. Now what semantic interoperability does, if you put some number into your computer, let's say 42, the computer has no clue what that information means. What you have to do, you have to connect that one piece of information with all the other pieces of information you have, kind of to build up a network of information. And then this actually makes the computer understand what that information means. And that also allows to fuse all of your different data pieces you have. So if we tell our computer, yeah, that's the gain of a UT instrument. It was before calibration, it was at a certain day, it was from a certain probe, from a certain component then the computer will be able to, info, to actually combine that information from that component with some other information from that component. And perhaps if we do that, the computer will actually understand that this is actually the answer to the ultimate question of life, the universe, and everything, at least to Douglas Adam and his book, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. So, we now converted the data from our physical entities into digital data. We converted it into information. We combined all of that information in our IoT, and we put it into our data processing. And for sure, also the data coming from the data processing is going back into our IoT. Now the next step is we need also a more scalable version for our data processing. And that is the digital twin. Now, that is not the topic of today's video, but I already did kind of a short video on the basics of a digital twin. And I will put that link to that video right here. And pretty soon, I will do more videos about the digital twin, about different types of digital twins we have, about what a digital twin, yeah, how it works and how it all plays together. But now you can see, we are coming from our physical world. We're converting the data to a digital world. We're combining it in the IoT with the semantic interoperability. We're putting it into a digital twin. The digital twin does, some, does our data processing. We're creating knowledge out of it. We are creating visualization out of it. And finally, the digital twin is also creating some action out of it, which is then going back to our physical world. That's why it is called the cyber physical uh, loop. So thanks a lot for watching. If you have any comments, if you have any questions, feel free to put them down here in the comment section. Next time, we will get one step closer to the concept of the cyber-physical loop. And we will be discussing the two phases of NDE, the classical NDE and also the NDE sensors. As usual, I will put more information into the description. I hope you like this video. I hope you've subscribed to this channel. I hope you give me a thumbs up and I hope I will see you soon. So thank you for watching. See you soon. Thank you. And bye.